Here we are, Edinburgh Playhouse, which is uh, Boston. Backstage, you've got like, all the pictures of all the great bands that play this place. The Clash, The Smiths, and Queen. <laughs> is it just me, folks, or did you get fed up of Freddie Mercury fucking tributes? <laughs> Come to me, my people. Lie number one, we were told it was a brave announcement Freddie Mercury made. Bravely, he stepped forward and told the world he had the killer virus AIDS. Bravely, he came up, bared his soul, told the world he had the killer disease. No! 24 hours before his bottom finally fell off, he appears on my TV screen weighing two stone and says, I've got something very important to announce. I'm thinking, blimey, I wonder what this is all about. And now that we talk of fake conditioned responses, as soon as Freddie's is dead, Brian May puts out that single, what's it called? Everything I do is driven by you. No, Brian, no. I think a more honest single for Brian May to put out on the occasion of Freddie Mercury's death would be called, That's Me Fucked. million pounds they made from that Freddie Mercury Wembley gig. Ten million pounds to tell us about AIDS awareness. Us. <laughs> Not Freddie. <laughs> you know, as if like a pamphlet from the government on AIDS awareness was going to make any difference to this fucking guy. You know, a month ago Freddie gets the government AIDS leaflet through the letterbox. Oh my fucking Christ. <laughs> Oh God, no one told me about this. Oh God, it says here, don't get blowjobs off Mark Almond. <laughs> no one told me! Who do they fucking say city? Who do they fucking say city? <laughs> ah, things we'd like to see happen. End of last year in London, we had our first drive-by shooting, which I think was a particularly American phenomenon. This guy gets out of this car, goes up to the bouncer, says, remember me? Shoots him in the genitals. And I felt sorry for the bouncer, because I can just see him there going, No, sorry, I can't place you. Are <laughs> oh, you a friend of Jan and Margie's? Did you just go to that caravan site in Pevensey? Names, yes, faces, no with me, I'm sorry. But do come in, I was wrong to turn you away. You're clearly not a troublemaker. Do come in. We're always looking for new members. Or at least I am. And just a tire squeal away from that stained pavement, my heart leapt up to see the knocked down a whole block right in the hardened heart of London. It was like an archaeological dig. I looked down at this live earth, this soil, and you saw how it could have been anything but which had been held down for centuries by the city centre's one fixed idea, and saw how it could all have been so different from the hotel that used to be there. Its imposing exterior, and demeaning interior, everyone cosseted in their little rooms. I want! A hotel with a courtyard strewn with straw and chickens and a woman with one of those wooden over-the-shoulder things with buckets on it going, Aha, Master Newman, up from London town again. I hope you're going to give me some more of that fancy gonorrhea. <laughs> I am being designed out. Because I'm just grateful my neighbours still say hello to me in the morning. Because, like, each night they must hear me going, No! You know, you turn on the gas ring and your match goes out. <laughs> so I'm getting a bit tense there. When I get tense, I've got to do some painting to calm down. It's a little thing I have to do. Just uh, start here. Oh, yeah. Let's just do some sort of flowers here, you know. Start with blue. You may notice I've gone over the edge slightly there, but... Uh, <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> When you start panicking about those things, you know, it defeats the object. <laughs> Just do that there. You may be thinking now, Rob, you made a bit of a, a rock for your back here, because you've got to get in all those leaves, but not necessarily. <laughs> Could do them blue if I want. a lot more mellow now. <laughs> my favourite painter myself is... Uh, just... <laughs> Magritte. And uh, when he was nine... <laughs> I've discovered the secret of comedy, obscure Belgian artists. Um, <laughs> when he was nine, uh, Magritte's mother had drowned herself in the lake at the bottom of the house and he saw her 
This is a nine-year-old. He saw her being carried dead, naked, with just a, 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 from the pool, with just a, a sheet over her face. And uh, uh, what do you know? They seem to have made some sort of psychological impression on the, on the wee nipper. <laughs> Because in all these paintings, they're, 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 just people with, they're all going really well, and he's got the landscape good, and the body's good, and he gets to the face, he goes, let's put a sheet on the head, just put a sheet on the head. There's a couple of people kissing what they need. Oh, sheet on the head, I'll just put a sheet on the head. But I, I, I love him because he's, he's um, a sort of a, a poet who, who works in paint. Um, he seems to be a poet first and a paint second. Probably because he's from Belgium, and, and there's no point in writing poems if you're from Belgium, because there's like... 17 people there, you could tell them all individually what you're feeling, <laughs> which has the added advantage of being able to use hand gestures. It's sort of like, it was like that, you know, and refer to obscure things like, it was like when Emil fell off his skateboard and, and it was like that. You remember that? Remember that? <laughs> but the other reason I love him, he's like, he was a brilliant, for a passionate man, he was also like a brilliant technician. And it's a true thing that he, was, he forged Botticellos and Leonardo da Vinci's. And for five years, the, the, it's absolutely true, the Mona Lisa that hung in the Louvre was his forgery. And people were still fooled by it. It caused them all the same emotions. It was that good. They looked at it and had all the same questions. Is she smiling? Isn't she smiling? Who knows? She's got a pillowcase on her fucking head. <laughs> Let it go, my Greek! Let it go! <sighs> uh, as those of you uh, who watched the telly yesterday, uh, will know, but this is, this is, I mention it because it is still uh, germane, is that uh, when Rachel chucked me, my one ambition, ton <laughs> thank you for your sympathy, thank you. <laughs> I shall soldier on. My one ambition, tunnel vision, shrunken worldview, is that the next time she sees me, I'll be with this new and brilliant girlfriend. I would ace her out completely and make her realise just her wrong she was. I was so crap, my only fantasies were that I'll be coming out of some club with this new and brilliant girlfriend going, hey, not so fast, you hot Swedish fox. Don't forget you've got to be up early to present that breakfast time TV weather forecast that you do. <laughs> oh, uh, hello, Rachel. Or, hey, but, oh, just steady on, girl. Keep your hands yourself. Climb it. Just because you've just won two Oscars for Best Actress doesn't mean to say I'm anybody. <laughs> oh, uh, hello, Rachel. <laughs> oh, hissing, fizzing, shouting and cursing. I walk the streets and, and uh, graffiti seemed to suit my mood. Saw some Islamic fundamentalist graffiti that made me question whether or not they'd read the book. Because someone had written in very bold letters, KILL RUSTY. U-S-T-Y. <laughs> and I figure somewhere hiding down a back alley, there's a King Charles Spaniel going, I don't want to die! 